Officials will not confirm it, but all other signs point to 60-year-old, three-time Super Bowl winner Bill Walsh returning to Stanford as head coach. There's an on-campus press conference later this afternoon. Walsh has reportedly been offered a five-year contract for $350,000 per season to replace new Minnesota Vikings coach Dennis Green. Ironically, it was Walsh who lobbied strongly for his former assistant Green to get the NFL job that's now created a spot for Walsh to go back to school. My initial reaction, it, it, I'm surprised, but the more I thought about it, I'm not so surprised. He, he has talked to me on more than one occasion about how much this school, how much he enjoyed coaching here. Despite taking three Super Bowl championship rides, Bill Walsh calls his 1977 and 78 Stanford seasons the happiest of his life. After the third Super Bowl title in 89, Walsh turned in coaching headsets for TV headsets. But after two seasons as an NBC football analyst, all signs pointed to Walsh analyzing football players for the 49ers in a consultant role. But over the weekend, a return to Stanford came back into the picture. It's a positive picture now on the Cardinal campus. You know, it's a great opportunity for, for Coach Walsh, uh, you know, with, with what the, the coaches have, have done. Um, you know, he gets to come in and, and take it to the, to the next level. From a recruiting standpoint, if nothing else, every player in the nation would want to come and play for a guy who won three Super Bowls. And certainly Stanford said they want a pro-style offense, and you can't do any better than Walsh. In his final NBC appearance last Sunday, Walsh may have given hints on his Stanford future and some people he'd like with him, maybe Gary Kubiak. Speaking of Kubiak, I, I talked to him for 30 minutes, Dick, about coaching somewhere next year. He's retiring, unless he changes his mind off this game. He and I talked about coaching as a career. I talked to him about considering possibly being on the staff at Stanford University. It's pretty interesting stuff, huh? Well, Walsh's numbers in the program, they are the Canton-type digits, and he went two seasons at Stanford and took the Cardinal bowling a decade and a half ago. Now, Walsh reportedly left college because he didn't like some of the aspects of recruiting. Apparently, at Stanford, Bill Walsh will not have to go and do a lot of recruiting. Former Stanford and 49er wide receiver Gene Washington recently hired at Stanford. He's going to handle some of the recruiting groundwork with Walsh just coming in, as you would say, to seal the deal. Yeah. Now, Walsh had a done deal with the 49ers as late as the weekend in Monday's San Francisco Chronicle newspaper. Game already... 310 days ago, Duke lost by 22 to North Carolina, ACC championship game in Charlotte. Blue Devils haven't lost a game since. The nation's number one team, the nation's longest win streak, 16 in a row on the line. Duke winning on average by 22 a game this year, hosting NC State in Durham. Check out the Cameron Crazies, Cameron Indoor Stadium, and good defense. Bobby Hurley, the steal. Thomas Hill runs the floor and gets a great bounce pass for the dunk. The State would hang in there early. Curtis Marshall picking up the loose ball to Donnie Seal. Leaves it for Tommy Gugliotta. Two of his 22, the Duke lead just one. What a big night for Hurley. Watch him use the screen by Leitner to beat Marshall to the goal. Hurley had 19.7 assists. Second half, it was blowout city. Just too much Duke. Grant Hill, the give and go with Cherokee Parks is perfect. Hill finishes off with a hoop. Duke shot 42 of 66 from the field. The nation's best field goal shooting team shot 64%, winning by 35. The Devils host 18th ranked NC Charlotte Saturday on ESPN. In Music City, SEC, number 10 Kentucky, visiting Vandy. Vandy hoping for five in a row against Kentucky. Remember the bomb squad, Barry Goheen, a few years ago? This is the bomb squad, but Kevin Anglin hitting three. He had 21. Then Bruce Elder, close to the NBA range. Vandy was up five at the break. Rick Pitino looking to avoid the upset. Went to his favorite weapons. Weapon one, the three-pointer. Darren Feldhaus. Three of his 15 there. And they're coming back. Memorial Coliseum. Then the monster, Jamal Mashburn. He would miss, but follow it up. Gets one of his 15 boards and two of his 21 points. Kentucky wins by 13. Mashburn, nine of his 21 points in the last two minutes. The Wildcats are 4-0. They lead the SEC East in their first win in Nashville in five years. The Big East rivalry. Syracuse at Georgetown. That's Dave Johnson. Syracuse senior, known for his defensive play in the past, an offensive force this season. The hoop and the foul. DJ smiling. Hughes was up five at the break. Show us some pearly whites, Jim Beheim. Second half, Orange continued. Johnson from the outside, cans the three. How about knocking down three more? He's become a terrific outside shooter. He had 23 points. Orange up eight. Georgetown goes to morning, but Alonzo was in foul trouble, and Syracuse was able to put it away. Send it in, Conrad! Yeah, Bill Raffery. Conrad McRae is back and bad, and the guy they call McNasty with the exclamation point on a 12-point Syracuse win. After losing nine in a row at D.C., Syracuse has won three straight at the Cap Center. 
five in a row over the Hoyas, SU, and Villanova. Top the Big East, you get headlines for dunks, but Michigan's Fab Five also doing it with D. Only one team has shot over 50% from the field against the new kids on the Big Ten block. The number 15th ranked Michigan Wolverines home for Purdue. On uh, Wednesday night, the Fab Five coming out in yellow. First half, Juwan Howard, the alley-oop to Chris Weber. Looked nice, but Michigan was in the hole by 10. Purdue was playing well. Off the miss in the second half. Let's throw everybody onto the floor, and Woody Austin says, I'll just wait here till the ball comes to me, and I'll use the window. Purdue by as many as 13. Steve Fisher's Wolverines would rally. Jalen Rose goes up with a prayer and finds an answer. And he also got fouled. Michigan got within five, but Purdue holds on. Woody Austin, the three, and the Boilermakers. Gene Cady upset. Michigan by five, 65-60. Boilermakers hold on to that early lead. A second consecutive loss for Michigan. Purdue outboarding Michigan by 20. An hour north and west in East Lansing, number 11, Michigan State, hosting Northwestern. Opening tip, Matt Steginger, Wayne Stevens, 2-0 for the green. And Sean Respert, he's a freshman, he's good, he's worth three there. 5-0. Then Respert, the pick, off the pass. And easy two, it was 7-0. Judd Heathcote was really enthused. Now watch Eric Snow, the full court pass. It's Respert again. He's slammed by Kevin Rankin, but he scores the goal. Respert at 17, Judd Heathcote still enthused. Michigan State won 78-61, no big deal. Northwestern's lost 25 in a row in the Big Ten, and they go to Indiana next. State's 12-1 overall. SEC West in Fayetteville, number 12, Arkansas hosting Mississippi State at Barnhill Arena. Lee Mayberry at 13, second half. The Hogs are in the middle of a 25-6 run. Roosevelt Wallace came off the bench and played well. He had 12. Todd Day, the breakaway dunk. He had 19, then the big O. Oliver Miller inside. He leads the Hogs with 22. Arkansas wins by 21. Wallace came off the bench for 12 points in 11 minutes, and he earned a start for Saturday's game against Ole Miss. The Hogs 3-1. Minnesota, one of this year's Stanley Cup favorites, Montreal, against last year's Cup Cinderella, Minnesota, to Super Bowl City, where the wind chill was about 25 below. But they were inside, so it really doesn't matter a whole heck of a lot. These are the electric stars, Minnesota's cheerleaders. Hockey cheerleaders, kind of a new thing. Patrick Waugh said, what's going on? 22 shots in the second period. Todd Ellick scores there. Dave Gagne beats Wah here. It's 2-1. Then more Madonna. No, more Madonna. Mike Madonna. He scores his 16th. 3-1 stars. Then Darian Hatcher from the circle. 4-1 stars. It was a barrage. And Pat Burns said, get off the ice. Patrick, enough for you. He saw 40 shots in two periods. The stars with 51 shots against the league's best defense. It's the second most shots given up. In Montreal history, Minnesota wins 5-2. In Jersey, Savers close out a devil homestand. This was wild. Donald Audette beats Chris Terreri. That made it 7-6 in the third. 34 seconds later, Troy Millett, the centering feed, Clint Malarchuk, tips it in. Problem is, this isn't basketball, so that's not very good. It's tied at 7. A couple of minutes later, Bruce Driver, the drive, Doug rebound, the rebound. Scream. Score. 8-7, Jersey. 26 seconds later, shorthanded, Dave Andrichuk from in front scores. His 300th goal ties the game at 8 and ends it. A ties a Meadowlands record, too, for goals in the game, 16. That's a big number, isn't it? Devils have not lost in the last seven. The Devils lost just one of their five on the homestand. Uh, speaking of hockey, Vancouver with two from Igor Larionov on the power play. Hand Edmonton a fourth straight road loss. Vancouver leads the Smythe by 11. In Connecticut, Cam Neely with two goals. Boston has not lost to Hartford in 10 games. Those two teams meet Thursday in Boston. And ahead on SportsCenter, we will update the condition of Ted Williams. Have more baseball news.